Real credit card questions require real people, someone who understands your issues and works to resolve them with you. That's why Discover offers helpful U.S.-based representatives available 24-7. Discover, exceptionally common sense. Welcome to Gold Medal Loser. I'm Lolo Jones, and I can't wait to have this conversation with newly minted Team USA Olympian Alona Maurer. Welcome to the show, Alona. I am so excited to have you. I mean, let's talk to our audience a bit about who you are beyond TikTok, that is. Uh, We'll get to that later. So I know you're from Burlington, Vermont. Uh, You began playing rugby at the age of 17. Uh, You were pretty much an all-around athlete in high school. Then you fully transitioned to rugby during your collegiate career at Quinnapi. How do I say that? Quinnipiac. Oh my gosh. You get a degree just for saying that. (laughs) And there, not only did you earn an All-American honor, but you are honors, plural, right? Correct? Um, Yes. You also led your teammates to three titles, national, intercollegiate, to rugby associate, the NIRA, pretty much is what I'm trying to say. (laughs) There Um, it is, And then this, I think, is super interesting about you. You graduated in 2018 with a nursing degree. Um, So that means Mm -hmm. next time I trip and fall over hurdles, I'm coming to you to help patch me up. Uh, Your father played rugby as well. So continuing that legacy. But I have to pause on these little tidbits about you. Your favorite movies are Princess Diaries number two. First off, who ever picks the sequel? The sequel is Um, never as good as the original. But the sequel has Chris Pine in it. So uh, okay, okay, okay. You won me over. Just right. that alone, we can just stop right there. But these other two movies we actually have in common as favorite movies: The Last Holiday yeah. and Pride and Prejudice. Which one though? The Pride and Prejudice with Keira Knightley? Or yes. okay, then okay, we can become best friends now. Yay! How exciting! <laughs> uh, I've watched that movie so many times on repeat, and I'm mm-hmm. just like, I'm gonna meet my man for sure. And then it doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you also enjoy uh, trying out new coffee shops and. And you go on wa- walks. Wow, you just, you do, you're living a Pride and Prejudice real time in 2021. Or I don't even know what year it is. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. But same like you, I'm like, right, this is the day I'll meet my husband on this walk. And then and never, happens. Have it. never happens. Never happens. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting. Uh, so you're also, this is your first Olympic team that you have made. Uh, the Tokyo 2020, 2020 Olympics, even though it was 2021, super weird, but we're going to roll with it. And you got sixth place and you also have competed in world championships. Your most recent was in 2018 where you got fourth. And um, that's a very impressive uh, resume so far for your age, which is, I have all those stats, but I don't have your age, but I know you're young. 24. 24. But I'm a Leo, so I'm turning 25 on August 12th. Okay, I like that you talked about the. We are the same person. I am a Leo, and today is my birthday. Stop trying to take my shine, you fellow Leo. (laughs) (laughs) It's tough. It's tough for us Leos. Uh, yeah, so, uh, w- I guess we're getting into some fun icebreakers, even though I feel like you are my sister now. <laughs> Let's do it. I love icebreakers with all my heart. I hope you're ready for this. Some icebreakers. I'm ready. Uh, Alona, what is the last new thing you tried? Probably going to the Olympics was pretty new. It was the last new thing I've ever tried. And then it's just, uh, it was a new experience for pretty much me and my whole team. So well, you can't top that. The Olympics is uh, obviously the pinnacle of all sports. Well, I don't know about all sports, mm-hmm. but our sports. <laughs> so yeah, I um, am. what fictional place would you most like to go and why? Ooh, that's tough. But I'd probably pick like Harry Potter. Mm. I just know in my heart I'm a Gryffindor for that's sure. That's a good answer. Did you actually see uh, Lori Hernandez, the gymnastics athlete? She did an impersonation of pretty much every Harry, Harry Potter character and she, she crushed it. Did you see that? Well, I didn't see that, but my, my teammates and I also did that. We made a TikTok like that too, and ah. people have been loving it. They've been going back through my TikToks and finding this one Harry Potter <laughs> one. I love that, how they will just recycle videos and it just keeps going viral. I love it. Keep going. What song or artist do you like, but rarely, rarely admit to liking it? I'm one of those who really just likes whatever's in nowadays. I want to say something like cool and quirky. Like, yeah, it's just this unknown underground artist, but I like whatever's hot at the time. Uh, big Ariana Grande fan, though, well, I will say. Well, there's no shame in that. I mean, she's like, um, I mean, people are comparing her to Mike, uh, Mariah Carey. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, everyone there's loves her, so like I love her too. There's not like an song, so. a country song? I don't really like country songs, but then some, some of them just get me. Like, Chicken Fried, I'm like, oh. 
let me go out drink a beer on the back of a truck or something is what it makes me feel like <laughs> well i mean if you liked pride and prejudice the movies you cannot tell me that that soundtrack does not go hard that song at the oh. end i have that downloaded i have i know work when do you listen to it oh uh, long runs you know warm up <laughs> when i want to cry in the fetal position because i'm still single <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah okay so i gotta download it then too that sounds good <laughs> all right i think we got the icebreakers down um i think we're yeah i think i really know you we could pretty much end this podcast because i feel like i can answer for you at this point because we're, we have a lot of similarities very similar besides the fact that i don't play rugby and beat girls up for a living yeah we're very different in our sports <laughs> i run I away you know, i run away in competitions like, and you yeah. like the battle This is very important news. August 4th was National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. Uh, reaction to that? I mean... I didn't know that, and I love chocolate chip cookies with all my heart. Okay. Well, I was about to hang up on you if you said you did not like chocolate chip cookies. No. Like, mm. what kind of monster are you? Yeah. So good. <laughs> Just like warm and But do you make gooey. them, or do you like... What are, you, are you like, no? Not, I feel like it's don't. hard to make a good chocolate chip cookie yourself. It is, Thoughts. but I'll tell you the secret because I really got into this one year and I'm embarrassed by it because, you know, I was like, you know, those, you know, the pre-bought bought store packages, those cookies are how I used to make my cookies, but now Love I make those. them from scratch, girl. I literally flour, butter, sugar, mixer. I am a Martha Stewart. So wow. uh, I'll tell you the secret. It's the temperature of the butter. It has to be at, it has to be at room temperature. If you mm. try to get that butter out of the fridge and melt it down in the microwave, your cookies are probably going to be flat. So. So uh, whenever you have time to, you know, take a baking, that's the tidbit I have for you. You know what? I think that is the key because when I've made it, like some recipes will call for fully melted butter and then they're always like a flat and a little bit flat, not very right. thin. Yep. It was the butter. butter. Um, and now the, I don't know, maybe you ran into this person at the Olympic Games, but Bruce Springsteen's daughter, Jessica, made her Olympic debut with the U.S. equestrian team. Like... Uh, did you run into her? That's wild. I heard that. I did not see her at all, but, um, I, it, I wouldn't recognize her. Nah, same. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Either. I, I, was like, like, I don't know. I'm sorry. And honestly, I don't listen to his music. I know he's an icon. Don't, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I wonder though, if she was in a yeah. sport, you know, where they have like walkout music, if she would use her dad's song. I would, if I was her. You would? I, I think that's, that's a lot I of don't pressure. know. I guess like maybe you're using your dad's Do you even know fame. one of his songs? What what are what is one of his songs? Is it was Born in the USA one of his songs? No, I'm, I I really so don't, know. don't know. It's this. like Living on a Prayer. Is wow. that him? What well, I know, he has iconic songs. This this is terrible. People, viewers, or listeners everywhere, we apologize. Yeah. Uh, you know, we on our iPod clearly or in our iPhones or whatever we got. Uh, we are listening to Pride and Prejudice soundtrack. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the news. Okay, now, Alona, to the heart of the matter. You have exploded at the Olympic Games on what I call just my favorite social media platform um, because I'm an old millennial, uh, but it's TikTok. So you blew up at uh, the Olympic Games because of your post. Um, so what was that like? You were, I mean, you just kept it real with people, right? Talking about being single, trolling, K Caleb Dressel. Uh, I don't know. At what moment did you realize this was crazy? You know, people are like, did you did you try to be like a TikTok star? Was that what you were trying? I was like, no, I was just trying to make funny moments for people. Like, I knew that the cardboard beds were a thing and people thought that was really funny. So I was like, well, I, I wanted to get my teammates together because my teammates are super supportive of my TikTok. Because going into the Olympics, I had like 86,000 followers and they that was like, that's big, yeah. wow. And so they wanted to do this TikTok with me. And then after that, I remember I went to bed, posted it, went to bed, and then saw the response it was getting. And I was like... What was it getting? Like, how many views? It was, when, when I woke up, it was up to like 1.2 million. And then nice. just kept climbing throughout the day. Um, and then I think people are like, oh, were you documenting your time? And I, I don't say I was really documenting my time as much as I was just documenting funny things I saw. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't doing days in my life. I was like this dumpling is so good or why can't why are they yeah. i was you know now known as the thirsty olympian i'm not proud of it but it's what people love okay so wait why are you known as the thirsty olympian because i hate to admit this you took that title for me I? first off 
Uh, you can have it back. I, you know, but I'm also... T- no, I don't want it back. You, I love that you took that title from me. So, uh, I, you know, this is this is going to date me, but my Olympics is what... It was all about mm. Twitter, you know? So, I would always complain about being single or, like, you know, just make jokes about that. So, they were like, dang, girl, you talking about being single a lot, you know? So, what were you doing on your TikToks? Well, I just think one thing is I tried to keep it, like, real and authentic. And as you've probably known, like, people expect Olympians to be, like, so focused and we're, we're not yes. funny at all. We have no humor, but I mean, we're in the, you're in the village with some of the most fit athletic people in the world. Like, are you Hot. not going to be checking them out? Facts. A lot of them wear spandex and their muscles are just there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's, oh, that's the good point you bring up that they assume that we don't like, if you do social media, all of a sudden it's like, you're not focused. I can't tell you how much of a debate that is i've had had at times where people have said well you know maybe you would win an olympic medal if you weren't on social media so much and it's just like do you realize how much time i have Mm -hmm. after practice is like hours you know and like you said you're it's not stressful to you like you're just you're doing it for fun it's a good release you're doing it with your teammates who are all very supportive so the the bed thing took off what did you guys do in the bed like uh what got how many athletes were on the bed i guess you were testing out the strength of it right yeah we were testing out the strength of the cardboard beds and I was just like, hey, I was in my suite and I was like, you guys want to try out different things in the bed? Like, do whatever you want. And so my one of my teammates did a skips and then another person did. I was like, hey, you could throw a tantrum wow. on the bed. And then I brought in, we did a fun childbirth scene and that was probably some of the funnest, the funniest like <laughs> moment in my, in my life. Um, so it was like a fun time. I mean, we were all cracking up in the background and it was almost a good bonding moment. And yeah, so people are like, oh, how could you be on social media? But for me, when I start thinking about the games and my next game, I get so stressed and in my head about it. And hmm. it, social media can be a fun way to like, just get out of there and not be thinking because it's nothing productive is com- stressing is coming from stressing about the game you're going to have in a couple of days. Yeah. But besides being a thirsty athlete, as you call it, a thirsty Olympian, as your new title is, uh, the other TikTok that just went completely viral was when you were on the balcony and you're looking down and you're seeing this group of athletes play, I guess, what were they playing with a football or a rugby? What were they? So they were playing with a rugby ball, but they were tossing it like a football. And I was like, Americans, come on. Yeah. You were like, I think they're swimmers, but basically you're like, they don't look good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then people, it turns out it was Caleb Dressel, who's literally won five Olympic gold medals. So it was like, oh, I love that as a female athlete. It was just like, no, oh, they don't really look that good. And it's like, yeah, sorry, Caleb, yeah. stick to stick to the pool. Yeah, it was funny <laughs> just seeing them. I just remember like, what are, they, what are they tossing the rugby ball like that? And I wanted to go out and say something, but then I'm like, they probably don't know who I am because I, I don't know if like hardcore swimmers have TikTok or no. So I was like, I was going to teach him, but I'm like, you know what? Let them live in ignorant bliss. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, that was amazing. And just garnered a huge fan base of just, uh, I was just, this is a powerful moment for a female <laughs> athletes. Like put them in this place. Yeah. Caleb, what's your five medals? Yeah. You don't know anything about rugby, but you can't just <laughs> a rugby ball. Embarrassing. Oh, I know. I know. Go do some bench press yeah. or something. <laughs> And now a message from Discover about customer service and common sense. When you have credit card questions, it's nice to have them answered by a real person. You know, someone who can actually understand your issues and work to resolve them. In other words, what you don't need is a robot. And that's why Discover offers helpful US-based representatives available 24 seven. No wonder we call it live customer service. Discover, exceptionally common sense. I just have to ask you, what's your biggest success and also biggest failure? I mean, I would say my biggest success is going to the Olympics. And then my biggest failure is how I left the Olympics. Um, it was so awesome to be named to that team and the, the thrill I got and the amount of pride I got. And then losing that quarterfinal game and not being able to compete for a medal was, I mean, I'm, I'm at probably some of the lowest I've been in my life. Um, And just because of the pressure I put on getting a medal and going to Olympics, like you got to get a medal. And then for that to be just taken away from you and, you know, both our sports, it's just, it's a, such a short amount of time where your whole future is decided. And so for me, it's, it was in a 14 minute game where all of my hopes and dreams just kind of like crashed. Absolutely. And I just bombed. Yeah. And what's weird about the difference between competing for team USA versus if you competed in like Europe is, uh, and Team USA, because we're always in contention for the medal count, you know, it's, you know, mm-hmm. Team USA is winning the gold medal count. We're, we're winning the overall. So it's like, 
uh, the fan base just automatically assumes that you are going to get a medal. And then when you don't, it's like they kind of try to peg you as like a flop or a failure or like they, they I don't know. It's like we forget that even becoming an Olympian is so very difficult uh, because it's overlooked because so many medals are won by Team USA. And so I absolutely understand your frustration of like coming up short and get not getting the medal what you had hopes and dreams set on. But like, was there any moment where you were just like, well, you know, I am an Olympian and it's my first Olympic. So it was like a huge success even to just accomplish that. I'm coming to that point of realizing like I am an Olympian. <laughs> You're going to need more time. Yeah. You're going to need more time and some chocolate chip cook- cookies yes. and some JLo. Yes, <laughs> for sure. I'm coming to that time. Like uh, some of my teammates are getting the Olympic rings tattooed and I don't know if I'm in the place for that now, but I, I hope to come to a place where I'm like I don't blame really you. happy about it. So I don't blame you. I don't have the rings at all tattooed on my mm-hmm. body. And I've been to three Olympics, uh, two summer, one winter. And the reason why I don't have them is because I don't want people asking me about my Olympic experiences because I've come close to a, a medal so many mm-hmm. times. And so it's just like, once you put those rings on you, people are like, oh, the Olympic rings, like what place? Tell me about your story. Tell me. And it's like, I'm not ready mm-hmm. for that. So I wear a necklace so that I can take off at any moment. Or if I want to talk about it, I can. Cool. If not, I love that you are very open about that um with your first olympic experience uh we were talking earlier and it's like you know this is the first olympics with covid Mm -hmm. protocols so it had to have been tough it had to have kind of robbed the joy that would have been there in a normal olympics can you talk a bit about that yeah i think it first started when you realized how different was in the opening ceremonies and when we walked out and the stadium's just empty and you're like who am I waving? There was no energy. No, they, I mean, there's still energy. You're like, who am I, I waving like, yeah, to? Who do I wave to? Like, there's volunteers <laughs> and some other team members and some media, but it's like, I could only imagine what it would have been like filled with family, friends, fans from all over the world. So that's when it first hit, and I was like, this is different. So did you didn't feel like you were about to cry when you were walking around the stadium, or you didn't feel emotional? Because. I, with every opening ceremonies I've been to, is like, I'm holding back tears, but it's also filled. Like you said, the energy's there. So I, th- I think that's what kind of made it like this was kind of just like we walked in, waved to nobody and we're like, and that's it. Because <laughs> you, you wait like three, you know, you wait like three hours. Yeah, it's a long, to just, just to set the athletes up, get them in place. It's a very long process that people do not see that are watching the Olympics on TV back home. You have to stage the athletes. They have to walk this long pro- progression and then line them up. And yeah, it's a very, you know, it's a long process. So yeah, for that moment to kind of be robbed. Well, what, what about after the opening ceremonies? What did you notice? I mean, after the opening ceremonies, then I just headed, went back to the village and I was like, okay, cool. And I will say Japan did an amazing job. Like the village was so nice and every, it, COVID was still there, but we still got to chat with people and the food was great. But then it got time to when you play your games and we played in this massive stadium and there no was fans. no fans. Well, let's be real. Have you competed with no fans before? Cause I've, I've run track races without fans, but I know it's a little bit harder, but was that like... Was that a huge adjustment or would you or were you and your team able to just focus on the task? I think we were definitely still able to focus on the task because we have played a couple times in COVID without fans. Mm-hmm. We went to Dubai and then we went to uh, Spain and played a tournament with no fans. So we were able to do it. But I know that in times past, we play so well when we know our families in the stands for us. Um, so we definitely, I think, still focused. But I, I would like to wonder what it'd be like if our family had been there and we knew that they were there. Absolutely. It's a game changer for sure. Um, Well, you have to spill the tea on this where there, you know, obviously you guys had to leave within a few days of competing. So normally after you compete, you go and just go on like this party rage, like Mm -hmm. they, you don't have to leave the Olympic village. I remember I stayed in the village two weeks after I finished in London and just was partying and hanging out with all the other athletes. And we were just basically just having the time of our life. So were there any secret parties because you weren't allowed to go outside? Like how did people celebrate finishing their competition? Like all this hard work, all this restriction, there's got to be this pent up emotion. What did you do after you finished your competition? Well, I know the first night I um, just went to bed because (laughs) that was where I was at. Yeah, I was exhausted and emotionally, physically. But then the next night, um, 
we I remember I was waiting to get like sushi and um we you can like grub hub things or, or deliver things and I was like, Well, I'm in Japan, I'm gonna get sushi. So I got sushi, but then I met some players and they're like, Okay, well there's actually been like a, a party going on on this green space after like one thirty and I'm like, All right, I'm doing this. So we first went and met met with our coaches at, at um their hotel they were staying at and that was really nice. He was kind of like a good finisher, a little closer because our two of our coaches are actually leaving and doing their moving on. So that was really tough to also, you're not only did you lose a medal, but two of your coaches are leaving. So, um, and then after that, we, I was up until sunrise and it was just so fun to be with my team. And I am somebody who loves to meet people like anybody, uh, meet anybody from other teams. So we were just hanging with, you know, other rugby players, field hockey players, uh, BMX. Oh, so you guys did people. get to kind of socialize a little bit. Yeah. At the end there. All right, so then when you were when we were talking earlier, you were like, I was asking about the Olympics, and you were you said <laughs> the Olympics, and then you <laughs> you had like a description. But why were you saying that? Like you were like the Olympics, they suck. <laughs> well, I've been joking with my friend. I'm like, I'm gonna write a book. It's gonna be titled The Olympics, where dreams go to die because <laughs> <laughs> it is it's rough. Like you, it's so exciting, and you're so hyped. You get there, you get all this gear, and it's so fun, and then you compete and. And especially with this one, you don't win a medal and you got to get out two days later. And it's like, this was my Olympics. Mm. Um, And I really have felt like, because we've worked, what, three, I've worked, you know, three years consistently. And then when we came back from COVID for a year of training, all we were training for was the Olympics. There was no other competition. So it was like, we weren't training. Usually we get tournaments all over the world, everywhere. So we trained for a Paris tournament, a Cape Town tournament. So this past year was literally only training for the Olympics. And then training for an Olympic medal. And um, for it to end like that was just left so unfinished. I absolutely agree with everything you say. And I'm going to have to immediately call up my sports counselor after this because everything you're saying right now is the truth. If you don't get a medal on the other side of that, the, the heartbreak, the pain that goes into it because of all your effort. And it's just like... And then you, you're mixed into a pot with people who are winning medals and are celebrating their victories. And um, it's a tough thing to process. And so I'm, I'm glad that you're being really real and saying I'm not there yet, you know, and, and I hope you get there to the point where you'll be able to look back with pride on competing at your first games. I mean, you did way better than I did. I mean, I freaking hit a hurdle and was almost a meme for everybody on mm-hmm. how to lose in Olympic games. So, um, yeah, but I, I know that you're a fighter and you're going to be back for many more to come. I hope so. Thank you. So, Alona, you are coming back from the Olympic Games, which is a physical and mental battle. It's like going through a warfare. So now that you're back home, you'll have a few days to kind of process. And then you need to work on the self-care aspect of it. You need to regain. You have to uh, really reset yourself after an Olympic Games. How do you plan on doing that? Uh, For me, it's been you know hanging out with people and connecting with my teammates still because that's something that's very tough for me right now. You, you've, I've worked so hard with these individuals and then all everyone's collective dreams were crushed. And so trying to connect with them as much as possible. I honestly, I've been trying, trying not to spend time alone and just spend it with my best friend uh, to get my mind off things. And then yesterday, to be honest, I had a, a chat with my sports psych guy because just as a sounding board, somebody who knows so much and has talked with other athletes because he was uh, there after we lost the quarterfinal and he really helped me. Um, and then other self cares, I think for me, it's being with my family and, um, chatting with them and going on walks, doing my pride and prejudice walks, you know, eating cookies, <laughs> <laughs> pride and prejudice walks, watching that mm-hmm, movie on mm-hmm. replay, replay Prince's Diaries number two, mm-hmm. cause Chris Pine, mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. Right. Uh, that will heal everything right there. Yeah. Just watch him all his movies, just a marathon sure. of his movies. <laughs> I do like the fact that you talked about your uh, family and your team because that's what I learned kind of during the pandemic because I spent um, like over a month and a half in my house alone. And that's, you know, I was, that was the first time I was kind of removed from my training partners. And then, you know, I'm not in a team sport like you for track and field. Uh, Bob said I am, but track and field, I'm like, you know, we're individual Mm -hmm. athletes. Um, I didn't realize the power of a team, the power of having someone, even just like those moments at track practice where you can just like, you know, go over the day, kind of just, you know, have the laughs, how much it's not only good for just having a friend, but like your mental health. So I love that you shared that. Um, and then, um, I know you're still in like the healing process. Um, is there anything 
fun that you'll do uh, to kind of try to reset, whether that's like, for me, after one of the Olympics, I went cliff diving in Jamaica. Would you be open to like bungee jumping or something like that to like maybe shock your system a bit? Uh, I don't know if I would, <laughs> but I am going to go to uh, hopefully to Mexico with some of my teammates oh. in a couple days and just like sit on a beach with them, have a couple drinks, chill out. Um, and then I'm going to go to Montana. And I think for me, the key thing is to just keep doing things because it's when I get stagnant and when I'm just sitting around that I start to really think and my mind mm. just becomes a prison. So um, just doing stuff and being around people is what, what I have planned. I like that. A plan of action. Keep moving. Definitely will help. Uh, not only physical, but just mental health big time. So thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely really good tips. Friends, family, uh, reaching out to someone and then, you know, just getting outside of your comfort zone, doing something, even if it's just relaxing. You know, that's... Uh, I. Like you said, yeah. sitting on the beach is something just sometimes we just forget to just take time for ourselves and just chill. Uh, so the good thing about competing at the Olympics, even though there's, you know, obviously it puts you through a very tough battle is you have mm. this big platform. So everybody's seeing you. So tell me, did anybody slide into those DMs? Any, you know, good looking guys, Chris Pine, he had to have seen the rugby match. You know what? I have to say, no one. Uh, it's kind of funny. I get a lot of DM messages still from from guys, and I'm like, the there's the ones who I want signing in are not or are not signing in. It's the ones who are like maybe not my type who are signing in who are, have this confidence They're about them, and I'm like, <laughs> is this my is this what I deserve? Is this my type now? <laughs> So I'm like, where do you get, I, I respect your confidence, sir, but I don't know if you're for this me. This is not a match. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, good on you for shooting your shot, but no, nothing really been happening. Oh, that, that, that breaks my heart. I mean, well, I don't know. Maybe next time. Just, that's why you just got to keep making yeah. these Olympic teams. It's not really about the medal. Let me tell you now, as a vet, it's about those DMs. It's like, we're just yes. there to get the DMs. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Well, I got to ask you this. Uh, what? What's the best piece of advice you have ever received and also the worst? Probably the fact that I just told you that the Olympics are not about medals and it's about DMs. It's probably the worst advice you just got in your life. <laughs> That's probably number two. The worst <laughs> advice I've gotten was actually pretty recently from a, from a coach was like, hey, you know, don't, don't share your opinion so much Ooh. because, um, and I think it had to do with maybe politically in some ways. Mm. Um, was he talking about in regards to these Olympics? These Olympics have been very controversial with athletes wanting to or not wanting to protest. Uh, was it in regards to that? I think it, it was before okay. that. It was like, you know, a couple months before. And um, because I'm one who my teammates come to me for with questions about mm -hmm. things. And I'm like, oh, I love to answer stuff for them and help them out. And like, so this is what's happening here because they don't really keep up with daily events. And so... I'm someone who I want to share with my teammates. I wouldn't say I'm like very political, but I do know things. Mm -hmm. And I have a very um, smart father who's also teaches me things. And so I reiterate to them what I, what I believe. And I have to say, I am somebody who also likes to listen to, to, to both sides. I'm not somebody who's like, blah, blah, yeah. blah, that's so wrong, but I will listen. And so I think one day, like he was like, you know, maybe like, you know, you don't have to share as much. And I was like, no, I, I was so confused because I was like, I, it's not that my teammates are asking yeah. me, like, this is something I want to do. And so um, I told my dad about it and my dad, and then the best piece of advice is my dad from a young age has always told me never to tone it down mm. just to be myself, take up space. Um, and so I told my dad and my dad was just like, no, keep doing that. Yeah. Um, keep being you. Um, and so I'm never going to stop. My, my, my personality can be a lot. I know that, but that's what makes me special. And I think if we were all the same and we were all just like, hmm, just went about our business the same way, it would be freaking boring. Absolutely. I, so. Yeah, you should never tone it down because that's why you became a household name. People fell in love with you at the Olympic Games around the world. Uh, and also, I, I want to give you some encouragement. encouragement. Chris Pine, uh, he usually goes to this thing called Gold Meets Golden. And now that you're an Olympian, you can go to this event. So uh, you might actually meet him in person. 
What? Uh, I yeah, hope so. gold meet gold. Gold meets golden. So uh, I've actually seen him uh, from across the room. I, I feel like he gave me a look, and I was just like too nervous. And then by the time I turned, someone else was right. asking for a picture, and then I never like you know it's one of those pride and prejudice moments. But it's to be continued. So maybe we can fight over him the next time we're both there. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you so much for being on the show. It was a pleasure chatting with you. We've had very similar experiences. Um, I love that you're real with your heartbreak in the Olympics, but I also know that you are a fighter and you are going to do this with humor. The bounce back game is going to be strong and people can just follow you on your journey because your TikToks are crushing it and it's relatable. And I don't know, you make me actually regret not being a rugby player. Thank you. I think maybe it's not too late, Lolo. You could try it out. Right? I mean, You'd be faster I've, had some, no I've had some bar fights. You know, I don't know if that like I got I got some toughness in me. But you know, I am a runner and I like running away from the battle. So I'll stay to that. Okay. You, uh, you know, but I actually would like to hang out with you just in case some stuff goes down. I feel yeah. like. Ooh, you are the best company to I'm keep. With you. So um, yeah, I with you. have had so much fun talking with you. And if Chris Pine slides into those DMs, please invite me to the wedding. I will. I will. Thanks, Lolo. Thank you for coming on. Thanks so much. And always remember that greatness finds us by obstacles in front of us.